Welcome to A Day in the Life of Woody. Uh, I'm here with Jackie. Hey. And what time is it, honey? 10-ish? 10.30. 10.30. So you didn't miss too much. I uh, just got up, did our thing. Had breakfast. Had breakfast. Jackie Hello. made breakfast. But um, we've got a lot to do. And uh, this is the inside of the stable, for you guys that haven't seen it in a while. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff happening. Uh, the biggest thing is this. Electricity. This thing hasn't had electricity since we built the shop. No, I'm sorry, since we bought this place. Uh, it did kind of sort of have electricity, but it was like tornado damage and no one trusted it. So you could like turn it on at the circuit breaker, use it for a little bit, then turn it off as you left the building. And uh, I am in the process of rewiring it. You can just see sort of like some of the wires, where are they, that I put up yesterday along the walls and things like that. Uh, Three-way switch. Four-way switch by that door, three-way switch by that door over there. If you don't know what these things mean, hang out with me. Maybe you'll learn some life skills today. Right now, we're doing the lawnmower. So this lawnmower didn't start because the battery was dead because it hadn't been started since December. And I put the battery tender on it and um, uh, filled the tires up, all this beautiful electricity. <laughs> and let's see if it starts. All right, so I don't know if this is gonna start. Uh, wrong key? No. Here we, this didn't start before, but we charged the battery. Should. <laughs> Not a good sign. It'll start. We just gotta figure it out. It has fuel. Pull the choke, turn the key. So now, uh, I checked. Hope has all the diesel she needs. The tractor definitely needs diesel. Colin's halfway full and this guy should be fine. So anyway, this is how we get diesel in the tractor. Honey, let her rip. Yeah, good job. It's very complicated. <laughs> I just think it's cool. You know, it like, is cool. We've got diesel on the, on the compound. We do, for the apocalypse. And uh, can you scooch over so we can see the other one? That one's gas. So this one's diesel, and the other one is gas. Are you watching? Uh, it, we're not even close. Oh. All right. It's gonna be exhausting. You know, you're a lousy farmhand. You're complaining after 10 seconds of work. I have been uh, cleaning all the windows, and this is my weak arm now. Because I've been. That's your arm cleaning window? No, your window squeegee. cleaning arm. The squeegeeing, yeah. <laughs> Building up muscle. I keep checking. I have this fear that I'm going to put gas in the diesel. No, I already saw. I checked before. Yeah, I checked too, and I double check, and then even afterwards I check again, and it doesn't make the fear completely go away. Anyway, I'll spray you guys watching every gallon go in, but soon the tractor will have diesel. Getting ready for the yard mowing. All right, the mowers are filled with gas. I thought I'd talk about the stable a little bit because I know that. Like, yeah, we did a lot of work on this stable and some people were kind of really involved in seeing where it's going and such. So I thought I would explain. I was going to do like a really first class workshop. It was gonna be 40 by 50 feet. And uh, I was gonna take the 50, sort of divide it in half and have two 25 by 40 shops. And one would be automotive and the other would be woodworking. <sighs> I don't know. That would cost about $85,000. And if my experience is worth anything, it would have hit at least a hundred. Uh, just because things happen, you just like, oh yeah, but that didn't include like the light fixtures or that didn't include this or that. And, um, it'd be great. And maybe I'll even do it someday. But Jackie was like, you know, why don't you just put your woodworking equipment in the stable for the short term 
And then at least you have a thing. It, it's out of the garage, it's in a place you can use it, and it's better. It's obviously not great, like this isn't weather sealed and you kind of want your wood to be like in a stable environment and such, uh, so it doesn't twist and warp. But, you know, what I have now is a bunch of woodworking tools crammed so tightly together in half a garage that I can't use them. So, let's talk about where we're going. If you look at this, a lot of these poles aren't necessary. I've talked about my contractor with it. I talked with my contractor about it. Um, here, I wish you could see well. I feel like it's so busy. Um, these thicker ones here, they have to stay. That's a thing. But this one can go, this one can go, and this one can stay. And if we take out, like in this case, three of the five supports, that one, that one, and that one, then this will be way more open. Uh, the same thing happens here. Looks like I can remove two of the five supports. This thick one with the stuff on it stays. You go, you stay, you go. And we're going to open this up a bit. So then it's like, well, what do we do with this? This is where the horses stayed on these like rubber mats. And these extra poles were to hold like doors and things like that. Because uh, you'd want a door for the hinge to swing on. Uh, or you'd want a pole for the hinge to swing on. So first it was, hey, let's get like concrete or asphalt or something. Fill this so that we have like kind of a smooth bottom. You know, there'll be a transition, but these won't be dirt bottom. We can use it again. And same thing over here. And then like my woodworking equipment is on wheels. But they're so bad that even like a pebble stops it cold, like worse than a skateboard. And, um, you know, I, I, you really want a proper bottom. So I was like, well, what if, you know, we added, say, half of the shop to the scope, right? You can see all these sort of beams down here on the right. What if we put cement, like a little skim coat over all this, filled the floors there, and had half the shop as you know nice smooth one surface and that was the plan for a few hours and then I realized you know what I'd be kicking myself if I didn't include this silly area with the mats and the hay right I'm gonna do that half of the shop and then this part's gonna be so worthless like that's no good so we went to include this and then <laughs> it wasn't long before it was like all right we're doing everything. Uh, we're not doing this section over here, although maybe I should. But uh, I think over here I'm going to continue to store like some farm implements, the go-kart, stuff like that. And um, we're going to have a floor that, that goes pretty much from corner to corner of the shop. It'll go from all the way there. It'll cover you know, everything that you see here. That's the idea. And um, that'll be, I guess, in an upcoming video. I'm actually gonna try and use my tractor to tear up all this asphalt, and I'm gonna remove all these unnecessary beams by myself and, uh, and prepare this thing for concrete. So we'll see how that goes. That's, removing the beams to me is pretty straightforward, but tearing up the asphalt, it, it looks easy enough on YouTube, I've seen it before, but it's something that I've never done. So hopefully that goes pretty smoothly. And, uh, and then of course it requires a level of cleanliness in the stable that I haven't achieved yet. So you can see right now we have all the mowers like sort of gathered right here. We're gonna have them in a straight line. The tractor will be where it is and then we'll have the other three mowers like in that straight line. Then they'll come in and out of the stable doors and in and out of this garage door and that's it. The heavy machinery will just be there and then that'll leave three quarters of the shop for me to like build things and do things and spread my wings and be myself. So um, that's the plan. Uh, I know I showed the outside of the shop to you guys fairly recently, <clears throat> but for those that don't make every video, this is what it looks like now. We've got the doors in. Uh, there's a door there, it's just rolled up right now. Um, 
piece. <laughs> it, it's better in a lot of ways. Those sliding doors right there, um, now it slides all the way past that garage door. So if I want to have all three open, I can do that. Whereas previously, this door just slid to this location and it effectively closed that door. But now that it can slide all the way to here, I can have like the whole wall of the shop open, uh, which is nice. Like if you're doing automotive work and you don't want to breathe those ugly fumes, then, then that's a cool thing. Over here, we got this wood burning stove, like stove insert last year. And my wife loves it. She, <laughs> she wakes up first, tends to like stoke the fire and uh, do her thing. So this is for storing farm implements. You can see I've got like something there and this is where things would go. And we store wood back there. Uh, it takes wood a year or two to dry. So we got this stuff, I think in January and we burned it all winter, but it, it, it was wet and it, it didn't burn as hot as it could have. But I'm pretty confident that because it's split well, and because this is North Carolina we're talking about, I mean, we're gonna have a month or two where it threatens 100 degrees almost every day. You know, it'll break 100, it'll hit 94 or whatever. I think that one year is really gonna dry the wood in this climate. I feel like the, you know, the, the people who maybe don't dry it in one year are from Buffalo, New York or something like that. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, this is where we store wood. The, oh, if you guys watched my day in the life where I couldn't split that gosh darn log, I have a 20 ton log splitter now. And if I'm hoping to put this to use today, I actually got it a week ago, but they left out this part right here. This came in yesterday. Uh, this hooks up to the back of a tractor if you guys are, are unfamiliar with it. And the back of the tractor has this three point hitch. So it connects here, here, and there. And, uh, um, sorry, I'm gathering my thoughts. And, uh, and then the, the hydraulics from the tractor power it through, through this thing. And I chose this because I, I feel like I've got a million small motors to maintain already, right? There's the tractor, there's Hope's lawnmower, Collins lawnmower, there's like the tiller, the weed whacker, the um, chainsaw, the um, hedge trimmer, the uh, uh, I miss any lawnmowers. I say my, Jackie's lawnmower, um, the go-kart, the golf cart, and then of course like the two cars. It goes on and on and on. And I'm like, man, I don't need any more engines in my life. I, I This thing, being that it's hydraulically powered, should just be as straightforward as like, hook it up to the tractor and, um, you know, kind of piggyback on its maintenance schedule. So there'll never be a situation where it like doesn't start or where I needed to change the oil or rebuild the carburetor or whatever. It doesn't have any of those things. It just runs off the tractor. And that's, that's why I liked it because I'm not an everyday wood splitter and I didn't want being kind of long winded, but I didn't want to ignore the wood splitter for like six months and then find out that it doesn't start. So that's, uh, that's why I got that, that model. And hopefully we see it in action today. Yeah. This one needs wood. This one we just emptied out. And uh, the other part of the stable. So uh, Chiz and I did a lot of this work ourselves. Like this roof line here, this was all gone. And we had to rebuild the roof for it. See my uh, weather vane? I like it. <laughs> um, we had to rebuild that roof and, and, and that actually went, went pretty well. There's a garage door here. It's just up right now, windows. Uh, it's starting to be an enclosed building, which I'm kind of psyched about. Once I put the new floor in, then uh, I'll start moving my woodworking stuff. And the, <laughs> the electricity, I know I talked about it already. <clears throat> Something, see the first stage of it, if you don't know anything about wiring, when you have a, a three-way switch, like this is a three-way switch. The end is a three-way switch over here by this door. And then all the ones in the middle, which in this case is just one, is a four-way switch. 
And the truth is I didn't fully know what I was doing. So I had to call my brother, who's a master electrician, and, and get some help. And uh, something about that not knowing exactly what to do made me slow in getting started. And yesterday I kind of popped the cork out and got three switches and an outlet wired up. And I'm so excited. Um, from here, maybe we'll do some today. I'd love to. The outlet should really start rolling. I'll put a switch plate cover on that soon. Don't, don't judge me on all these. <laughs> I just left them off because in case I had to debug it. But um, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to put a lot. There's gonna, you see these old school fluorescent lights? They're going to go. And I'll replace them with something similar but LED. And I'm going to have five per run. So you can see there's, there's four there and then a fifth one behind that door. So there'll be five there. There'll be five in this stripe. Oops. There'll be five lights in this stripe and five lights in this stripe. I'm doing all of it on 20 amp circuits so that if I ever want to just like drop a cord from the ceiling or something and, uh, and quick have it run, then I can do that. And um, uh, so it, with 20 amps, like sometimes my, my bigger woodworking tools and stuff appreciate the extra amperage or they'll, they'll flip the breaker on a 15 amp. So anyway, that's just the ceiling. Then we're going to wire the hell out of some of these poles and uh, uh, the electrical is going to be first class. I've got all this stuff ready to be installed. And uh, I pop the cork. <laughs> it, even though there's just one plug right now, it is so much better than no plugs. You know, I, I had an air compressor in here. We filled the tires. We got the battery tender. We fixed the battery. Um, I was really excited to just do my first plug, do the complicated part, and, uh, and now we have power. Soon, we'll have lots of power. So, so that's a cool thing. Anyway, there's your stable update. Uh, lots of like super duper exciting stuff, uh, to me anyway, uh, going on. And uh, you'll see some more progress videos on this soon. Are you rolling? Yep. Well, <clears throat> I was putting like the, the implements away, kind of getting ready to mow. God, this thing keeps going. And uh, there was this like hose bib thing here. Can you come closer? Cause they, they can't zoom a mic, baby. Yeah. And uh, um, there was a hose bib thing here and it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked for like the year and a half we've owned this place. So I thought it wasn't connected. We have other hose bibs that weren't connected. And uh, I pulled it out of the ground so as to make room. I had this idea. Can you get the stable here? Mm -hmm. That I could put like the ballast here and the log splitter there and put two in one stable. Well, it wasn't without its complications. I think I need to turn the water of the house off. I think so too. I'll be back. You want to get bopped with the shovel? Because that's how you get bopped with the shovel. dug the hole. We use this kind of as a bucket to, to get all the muck out. And this is the irrigation line that we, that we need to plug. So you can see it's kind of filled with dirt now, but that's not going to hold it when I turn the water pressure back on. So I'll see if I have parts. If not, I'll go buy them.
I should do it. <laughs> All right, not sure how well you can see this, but failure. Um, you know what, I'll take this out of the tripod. <sighs> failure. So it looks like it's, um, it's coming out where the barb goes into the, the irrigation hose. Either it's not deep enough or more likely it wasn't cleaned out enough and there's, there's dirt stopping it from getting a good seal. So I'm gonna clean it out, put it in again, make it better. I got this knife from a fan, it's nice of him. Alright, thank you. Uh, I think it was Void Spy, I hope I don't have that wrong, for buying me this knife. It totally does its job, cuts things. Alright. I need the, um, the hose clamp. Hmm. Let me hunt for this. That was a short hunt. The hose clamp was already on the tube. And I've hammered it on pretty well, actually. If this doesn't work, I will be one frustrated guy. Man, 
It seems like I did a good job on this. Let's test it a second time. Okay, here's my handiwork. It looks like I got it this time, the leaks. Oh, now we can get on with our day. You're really filling out that shirt, baby. I'm not sure that's a good thing. The guns, babe. The guns. <laughs> so when I bought this house, uh, it had 14 acres of land, still does. And I was afraid that I would grow really tired of mowing like 14 acres and that it would be this white elephant that made me unhappy. It didn't turn out like that. But in an effort to combat how much work it is to mow, I bought all this lawn mowing gear. This one's Collins, this one's Hopes, this one's my wife's, and that one's me. And uh, <laughs> Collins making noise. Anyway, eight foot, three foot, six foot, six foot. You put them all together, we mow about 23 feet wide at a time, and we knock out the yard in two or three hours. So uh, let's get that done. Look at this crew. Look at these guys. I feel like they're getting ready for game day. Nope. Give me a grr. I'll accept it. All right, um, most, the yard is mowed. I've been waiting to use this log splitter for ages. Like, um, and here it is, ah, sun's in my eyes. But uh, through some shipping issues and me taking a while to pick it out and then them shipping it with a missing part, it's been weeks and I've been wanting to do this. You guys who watch all my day in the lives will probably remember this log. I spent like four hours trying to chop this log and I couldn't do it. Um, what you guys don't know is I bought a pair of wedges and I, I spent like a half an hour with those. No progress. This thing was just, <laughs> it was too much for me. I was able to cut some you know, edges off, but I, I couldn't split it. And I've been in particular looking forward to putting this guy on the splitter and seeing how it splits. So uh, as a test, just to make sure I had it hooked up, I have done a couple. I did one log and I got that much out of it. But you guys are going to see the first big log. Uh, here now, so here we go. Fingers. Okay. All right. That has to be a step in the right direction. 
It has a tendency to fall toward you, mm -hmm. but it doesn't take much strength to just you know, keep it on track. Okay. Ready? Uh-huh. Nice work. All right. Can you roll it more? No, I think the thing is stopping it. There we go. Watch your fingers and toes. Uh -huh. I'm going to try and use this thing. And I guess that seems successful. So That's far. the ants? Yeah, I'm not a fan of the ants. They're not red though. Okay. Ready? What do you want me to do, Brandon? Nothing. Okay, well. Watch we'll... my magnificence. Okay. I don't want to. No, it's kind of Vikingish. <laughs> Alright. I would love to just split this down the middle and turn it into a freezing bladed piece of wood. Ready? Um, we're with Saint Clair. <laughs> I stopped stacking because I was getting tired and it felt dangerous, but that's how much I got stacked. All the lawn cutting tools are put away and, and done for the day. It's time for me to go inside. It's just about dinner time, and if I'm lucky, my wife is already on it, but I'm not really sure. so nice right after it's cut. Even the evenly cut weeds look pretty good. This is the section that, ah, I'm dropping stuff. This is the section that you guys saw us cut. I don't know if the camera got back here very well. I'm sorry, it's so shaky. to hold it a little better. And this part over here, my daughter cut. Ah. Should be a little better now, we're on the driveway. This is the guest house, this is where Dr. Chiz used to live. Still too much wood to cut. <laughs> but anyway, you want to see my masterful backing in? I do this a lot, so I'm pretty good at it. Ah. 
there we go. Oh, that concludes the outdoor section of my day. All right, so it's been one second. What's for dinner? Uh, chicken rice aroni. Woohoo! All we right. We did this when we were just dating. This is like the first meal you ever made me. Yes. Like 24 years ago. Not like 24 years ago. 24 years ago. <laughs> it might have been a week less, but something mm -hmm. like that. On April 1st, I met Jackie. So as I record this, is it April 2nd or 3rd? Uh, anyway, it's Sunday, whatever that is. So uh, we met just a little bit more than 24 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. All right, I'm here with Colin. Yep. My dinner is served. Some sort of rice and chicken thing. And what are we watching? Park Two. <laughs> Jurassic Park Two. Uh, it's on the TV over there. So dinner with the boy. Well. The day is done. It's uh, 11 o'clock at night. Hope is still doing her homework. How's that coming, Hope? It's coming along. <laughs> she had like 11 days off or something like that. No, it'd just be seven. Okay, also. Nine. You two. Nine days off. Okay, Dad, how long have I been working on this essay? I don't know. Too long. Too long. So she's had nine days off in a row, and she's doing it 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday. <laughs> but I started doing the like foundational work and actually being able to do the DBQ properly. To be able to do the DBQ properly. I told her to be louder. <laughs> on like Thursday. Okay. Or, like Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, yeah. So Jackie made her do it here in the kitchen island so that she wouldn't be distracted by other things. Like. Jurassic. Dad and Colin blasting Jurassic Park 2. In fairness, I was only awake for part of that movie. I kind of fell asleep. How could you fall asleep? It was During so Jurassic loud. Park 2. It was so loud. I did a lot of work today. As did I, but it was so loud. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that wraps up a day in the life of Woody. Uh, Hope's getting her. This is multitasking. <laughs>